Hello everyone and welcome to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. Today I am bringing you another watercolour adventure. Um, back in October when I did Inktober I ended up doing quite a few prompts that shared a, a common theme and I did it completely by accident. And then in February I did the Fairy Tale February monthly art challenge thing with Elizabeth from my Artsy Plans and I ended up doing a few things that also fitted in with what I'd done previously so I wanted to bring them all together in one sort of big epic picture and test out my illustrative watercolour techniques. Up until now I've done a lot of washes and you know uh, sort of just really sort of splishy sploshy things that when you look closely don't actually look like a picture. So today's idea was to try and be a, a person that colours in and keep inside the lines. I had no idea how this was going to go and the main thing that happened was it took me a gajillion times longer than I thought it would. I think overall it did, it took me about five or six hours and it's not exactly a masterpiece. But anyway, I'm gonna switch the top down view and you guys can see my endeavors and you can let me know what you think in the comments. Let's get going. I didn't want to bore the pants off you with me sketching this out. Um, I think that might have just uh, made you all lose the will to live. So I'd already done the pencil work and here you can see I'm starting on the line work and my big head is constantly in shot because I needed to get really close to the paper to see what I was doing. That all stops when I start painting though, don't worry. So there was really, um, it wasn't just the, the, the idea of bringing all these things together that made me want to do this. I am working on an A3 sheet of watercolour paper and I've talked a little bit about this watercolour paper before and it's crap, it's terrible. It's WH Smith's own brand of watercolour paper and it's super cheap. There's three sheets left in the pad and I really just wanted to use it up. Now because I'd never done anything like this before with watercolour, I figured I wasn't going to waste good paper doing it in case it was a total disaster. So I kind of knew before I started painting what I was getting myself in for in terms of how the paint was going to behave on the paper. But I still thought it would be a good idea to use an A3 sheet as well because I could make everything that little bit bigger. My brush control still leaves a lot to be desired, so I figured the bigger the spaces I had to paint in, then the better I was going to get on. So that was the idea behind using this paper. Now that I'm finished it, obviously I'm looking at this sort of retrospectively. The rest of this watercolour paper I'm going to cut up into tiny little squares and use to test, um, you know, colours that I've mixed. I'm not going to use it to paint anymore because... It's pretty horrendous, I'll be honest. I've tried quite a few brands of watercolour paper now, so I, I can't claim to be a guru, but you know I have experienced far, far superior quality for not much more money. And uh, yeah, this, this just doesn't cut it. So as I'm going along here, uh, this stuff on the table, the, the objects on the table here in the witchy workshop, I wanted to draw them in a, a little bit more, um, with a bit more detail before I inked them. So what I did was I just wanted to get the shape of the table inked in first because my eye seems to acclimatise better to finer details when I can see things in ink, you know, that are surrounding it. And it was the same situation. I'm doing a little stack of books here and I just couldn't get the angle right when it was in pencil, but having the table lines down in ink seemed to make it an awful lot easier for me. So I don't know whether it's just my, my eye seems to work better with stuff like that. I don't know. Um, I think I could also have put a lot more things on these shelves and made them, you know, a bit more cluttered, a bit busier. But again, being aware of my ability level, I thought I was better to keep it a little bit more simple. One of the things I did really struggle with with this picture was the, the perspective and the angles. I am not a huge fan of drawing architectural things and this obviously does have that sort of slightly calculated architectural element because you are trying to get the, the sort of 3D perspective right. And especially with this star, I really struggled to get it to look right. And I think that's an area in terms of drawing that definitely, definitely needs more work. And it's something that I'm going to keep trying because it's something that I want to improve on for sure. Um, it's not something I would sit down and draw 14, you know, 3D rooms like this because I would be absolutely bored to tears. This is one of the very few occasions where I'll use a ruler. I like to draw my lines freehand as much as possible, but when you're doing something like this, then they're just not accurate enough. And you would end up with a really, really skewed perspective on your room. 
um, if you had to, you know, just do it, eyeball it basically. So here we go, starting with the paint. And I knew that I wanted the walls to be a sort of dirty, <laughs> a dirty blue colour. So this is a really washed out indigo. And this is where the problem started. Now you can see there how blotchy the paint is. And it didn't matter how much water I used, you know, to try and keep the page wet so I could keep moving the paint about. If you use a lot of water on this paper, it buckles like crazy. So I was trying to get that balance of being able to smooth the paint out and get a nice smooth finish and not have the paper, you know, folded in half. And I had the same issue with the floor as well. Originally with the floor, I wanted to have like paving sort of flagstone type things. And I realised that with my skill level that that was going to be very, very difficult. So I opted for more of like a poured concrete floor. And because I had all these blotchy, horrible watermarks, I knew that I was going to have to come back to this one sort of dried later on and try and do something, anything, <laughs> anything at all with it. So I uh, I do return to the, the scene of the crime. The bricks were my favourite bit. This was awesome. Um, I, Instead of fiddling about with the, the little gaps in between the bricks, I thought the beauty of watercolour is you can layer it. So I put down this really pale raw ochre to begin with over the entire area and I let that dry and then I knew I could go back over it with another colour. So that was kind of fun. And I had this lovely brick red colour. I mean, like, oh, it's just fabulous. And I liked the une unevenness and the characteristic of watercolour because it gives that really nice effect um, for something like bricks where the texture is quite uneven and quite often the colours of them are quite inconsistent as well. So the, the medium and the crappy paper actually lent itself to this. And I was really, really pleased at how my brick wall turned out. <laughs> there is not a sentence that I reckon I'll say very often. But this was fun. I didn't feel any pressure on myself, but my brush control was quite, uh, quite obvious that it needs help <laughs> is doing this. So onto all the wooden bits next and I just wanted to get a base coat of paint down on everything that was brown um, and I knew about again I would be going back over it. So every time I went to a new wooden area I just altered the mixture slightly by adding a different type of brown or a, a, a little bit of black into it just so that there was variation in in all the different parts because there's quite a lot of wooden parts in this picture and I didn't want it looking really sort of samey because I figured in a sort of ramshackle rundown witch's workshop that they, that she might have salvaged the wood from various places so it wouldn't be all like Ikea matchy matchy. Well that's my thinking anyway and I'm sticking to it. And here we go with the cauldron. Cauldron, <sighs> slight regrets with this. Wish I'd used a slightly lighter shade. I was frightened it was going to blend into the floor though, which is why I, I chose to make it this dark. But looking back on it, I could have gone a little bit lighter and it would still have, uh, have stood out next to the floor. So now I'm getting on to the kind of itty bitty bitty bits. And again, what I really wanted to do here was to get the whole picture in colour. And then I could go back and tweak the various parts. So I was just jumping between different colours in my palette, which was the Windsor and Newton Cotman Colours palette. And I just sort of started to inject a little bit of, of brightness into the picture because I was quite aware that the backdrop is what we would say, a good Scottish word is drich. You know, it's very sort of drab and the colours are all very muted. And I wanted there to be a teeny weeny little bit of magic in this witchy workshop. So I chose some deliberately bright colours for some of the, the various things that are dotted about the room. And it was just to lift the picture a little bit. I really didn't plan out a colour palette when I started this. I, under normal circumstances I would always plan out my colours but because again this is all really new to me and this was quite sort of experimental I just kind of flew by the seat of my pants and just picked colours as I went and it made it a little bit less intimidating and a bit more fun for me for a first attempt and this colour of blue oh my god I just love it that's amazing in that little bottle <laughs> simple things once again you know me like simple things 
So here we go, I'm just working my way around the rest of the picture now and I'm just splodging in some colour here and there, deciding what colour things should be. I don't know, I didn't really, um, I just, yeah, I was like, oh, I'll have that colour and dipped my brush straight in the palette and away I went. Here's the scary part, and uh, I knew I was going to do this. I was trying to think about the light source, so it's two candles on the wall, and I figured that that light wouldn't travel all the way across the room. So the colour that I had used for the walls, which was a watered-down indigo, I just went back over it a couple of times in this corner to create a sort of dark, shady patch. And again, it was just to make the picture a bit more interesting and try and use as much of my arty knowledge for light sources as possible. I could have gone into a lot more depth and detail with that but again it, there's a lot going on and it's a big sheet of paper so I didn't want to overwhelm myself. This paint I'm using now is the Gansai Tambi uh, gold paint and I've used it in quite a few areas of the picture and again I just wanted something a little bit jazzy in there. At some point during this video, I can't remember when, I do actually tilt the paper and you can see the gold much better you know as it catches the light. So here I'm going in and putting some shadows in now. So I've darkened down my brown and I'm using this to try and get that sort of 3D effect. Uh, you know, the whole picture is, you know, it has that perspective and I really wanted to utilise that to the best of my ability, which let's face it, when it comes to painting, isn't very much at this juncture. But I could, it's kind of like transferable knowledge from other arty pursuits. So I knew that I could add darker shades in and roughly where the shadows should be. So I tried my best with my limited painting knowledge to emulate that and just give the picture that little bit of depth in the, the 3D-ness. So I focused quite a lot on the table legs, that seemed to be a big thing for me. And just thinking about that shadow in the left hand corner of the room. So I kind of like brought that across a little bit. So here I'm starting on the shadows and the bottles and all I did was take that indigo paint again and just water it down slightly and then use that over the top to create that sort of darker area and use it for the, the shadows. Now bearing in mind that the light's being cast from the right hand side to the left hand side so all of my shadows are on the left. There we go, there was the shiny bit. Hope you didn't miss that. <laughs> so I'm just adding them in there so that all that is is the indigo paint and I'm literally just putting a wee spludgy spludgy bit on and it looks as if it's cast a shadow. Darken down some of my cracks here again with that indigo and put a shadow on the outside of the cauldron. Now I figured that the underneath of the table wouldn't be seen much light so I decided to make that a good bit darker as well and uh, again over in this left hand side. This didn't go as well as I would have liked. Um, I would have liked a much more gradual sort of gradient of that grey colour but the, the, the limitations of the paper really didn't help me there. Maybe if I was more experienced or used a bigger brush that might have worked better. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that if you are experienced with watercolour. So to remedy the floor situation, I just thought I'd make it really grotty and grubby looking. So I just kind of like splodge some more grey paint over the top of it, you know, make it look a bit kind of like worn. And uh, that was it really. So uh, I realised I'd missed a line out on the table at this point as well. So I went back in with my fine liner and fixed that. I did have a panic point in the middle of this picture and think, oh, this is going to go horribly wrong. But I'm actually quite pleased with the finished result, considering it's my first time doing this sort of precision watercolour. And aside from the, the walls, which I knew was going to happen because of the paper, it's actually kind of added to it because I do think it would be quite a grotty little room belonging to a witch. So all in all, I'm not displeased with it and think for a first attempt especially on A3 I'll take this one as a win. I'd love to hear what you think about that guys so you can leave anything you like in the comments and you can check out some other watercolour videos here. If you've liked this you can also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of the same and get notifications every time I put a new video out. Thank you so much for watching guys and we shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.